Closed captioning for the Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the tastes, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on the Casey Malone Show. Today we visit Camp Stambaugh. Our local Boy Scouts are celebrating their 100th anniversary. I also make the complete meal with my Asian wilted salad with chicken. But first, in its 96th season, the Youngstown Playhouse. I'm here with James McClellan. He is the operations manager at the Youngstown Playhouse, but he's Jimmy McClellan to me. <laughs> and uh, Jimmy, yeah. this is the perfect position for you. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad you think so. I'm glad you think so. I mean, it with is. This, so what, how many years have you been here now? This is my fourth season that I'm going into. Perfect. Yeah. This fits you to a T. Thank you very much. I mean, I'd rather be here than, you know, on, on an assembly line, that's for sure, you know? <laughs> well, you can't get too depressed about your job when it's a theater and you've loved theater your whole life. So, I guess it's it's a pretty good thing. And I've just seen such a revitalization oh, here at the Playhouse. I mean, in the look and the feel and, uh, you know, I can't make every show, but every show I come to, I mean, the quality and the performances are amazing and the attendance is very good. It is, isn't it, you know? And you know, when you get a, a popular show, um, you know, a good production and people come and see it and they see how good it is, that inspires them to come back, not just as audience members, yeah. but to audition for things here. And they get the idea that, okay, things are on the upswing at the Playhouse and they get excited about it and they come down and continue to support it and that's how it thrives. You have to keep the quality up, you know, or else people will lose faith. Well, how did you get that transformation? How do you think that, that like that positive energy returned to this building? Well, uh, the, the, the gentleman before me in this job, uh, Bernie Appelees, uh, was a Youngstown native, and I'm mm -hmm. a Youngstown native. And I think it was very important. We had hometown spirit that we brought to this place, you know? Because we loved this place when we were younger. He was here as a kid. I wasn't here till my late teens. Mm -hmm. But still a kid, you know, a teen. Yeah. You know? So I think, <laughs> you know, when you bring your, your love of Youngstown and your love of theater together, that's the Youngstown Playhouse. You know, that's love of theater, love of your hometown. And Bernie had it, and I wanted to continue that. When Bernie, when it was time for him to move on, he's in Chicago now. Yeah. But when it was time for him to move on, I interviewed for the job, and I think one of the reasons why the board um, asked me to do it was because I was from here and knew this place and knew the people in the community um, and was already very involved in this organization. So I think that's been the key, is to kind of create grassroots sort of friendliness toward the place, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and attract some people who are just proud of their hometown and the arts in their community. And with the new season, I mean, you've really got some wonderful offerings. We're yeah. starting off with Dream, Dream Girls. Girls. It's like, it's, wow. I know, and sales are great, It's and it looks great. This is a beautiful looking show, a beautiful looking show. I'm, I'm impressed, and I've seen some great looking things up there, but this is special. So I hope, you know, people know. Um, to come and see it because it's really great. Now, what season are we in? We are in the 96th consecutive season. It's so exciting. Season. I hope I'm alive for the 100th. I right. mean, would that oh be Oh my gosh, awesome? it's in four years. Of course you're going to be alive. I know, I better be. You never now. know. I can't get my streetcar. Well, mm. being a doctor just isn't enough. Not enough, no. You really Nothing just else to need do some more day. things yes, to do. Exactly right. That's exactly right. So, taking on the, yeah. uh, the board at the, uh, the Playhouse, yeah. just a couple hours a month. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a lovely thing? No, it's kind of nonstop, um, yeah. but it's 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 the passion. It's what it's what I love. So it's a great healthy outlet. Is what it is. When did you start getting involved with the Playhouse? Uh, with the Playhouse specifically, when I came back from uh, I was in the school medical school in Kansas City, mm -hmm. and I had done improv and some stand up out there, and now I had to work, and so I couldn't travel. I couldn't do anything. And I started itching just to do some theater and do some shows, and I started doing plays. And to me, growing up, the Playhouse was the pinnacle. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, if you were on this stage, you were something, you did something right. Mm -hmm. So I started getting cast slowly in some of the shows. Started off as, as a traffic cop, I think, and guys and dolls, you're, you know, just waving <laughs> yeah. traffic, letting know what I was doing. And then slowly worked my way up to do shows, and then got really interested, you know, when the Playhouse almost went away. 
that's when what? it really kind of sparked me more so, I so think. So what that what, what is that? We're talking about 10 years ago? About 10 years, yeah. There was a flood here at the Playhouse. The, the roof collapsed, pipes br froze and broke. It was a really cold winter. And so when we came back in over Christmas break, everything was frozen and there was zero funds and things were bleak. And they were having meetings actually, they couldn't even be in the building. We were having meetings downtown and they were deciding, the board, and I was not on the board at that time, was deciding about maybe shutting the whole place down. And at that moment, like for me, I was like, okay, this is something that's been around for a lot longer than, I mean, we're on our 96th season, so that was I mean, 86 this years is ago. An institution. And there were, so there were people that worked hard long ago. My uncle, Ed was in one of the very first production in this building when they moved it from Market Street to here. Yes, because this is one of the oldest community theaters. The uh, oldest ongoing running show, yeah, theater in the country, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So they were ready to close the place and get rid of it and let it go, let it die. And I didn't, and I took that personally because I thought this is an institution that people work too hard for. Mm -hmm. And we fought to have one more show in the summer. We thought it would be like a farewell tour. And we did, uh, Barefoot in the Park and Blues in the Night. And we were doing t in two plays in one month. And we thought it would be a farewell tour. Well, thank God, people started showing up and it started to grow and their interest started to grow. And then I got more involved in the board and Bernie came along and Jimmy came along. And then so the last four years, I've been lucky enough to be the board president and the four years with Jimmy. And each year has been, first year was to get organized, figure out what we didn't know. Yes. Second year was to try to find some grant help because there's, the building was old. Well, it is and old. So I mean, but look, be done. you know, the roof. The, I mean, yeah. you needed all new plumbing. I mean, that was serious stuff. Serious. And and then the last year, we secured a, close to ninety-six thousand dollars in grants that we had not ever reached out for in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and we're trying to double that again for this year because now we want to improve. We just got the parking lot redone. It, I mean, the exterior is gorgeous. Yeah. And your signage, you know. It, it reminds you of the old days when you used to drive down Glenwood, like, that's where that's the right playhouse right. is. From the exterior to the interior, I mean, everything is just, I mean, it just has a whole new fresh take on it. I'm it glad. really does. I'm glad, thank you. It's still the same old place, it really is. And I love that about it, you mm -hmm. know, because when I, it, it's still, but it's just better. people walk in who Improved. haven't been here in a while and say, oh my gosh, it still smells like the playhouse. It does. You know? <laughs> Which funny. I'm yeah. taking as a compliment. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's nostalgic to come in here. You, you know? are right, though. There is a right. A well, look at all these photos on the wall and everything. Yeah, I mean, that, no, there you know, is a, a smell about yeah, this place. You're absolutely. right. And people say that. I haven't been here in a while, but man, it still, you know, smells yeah. like that. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Well, autumn is in the air, and I am here with Rue, the dude from the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery. And man, this is one of my favorite seasons, and you guys have got it going on. Yes, we do. You know, when the seasons change, so does our menu change. So these are some of our new menu options we have here. These are our flatbreads. Uh, this is actually our smoked kibasi sandwich with some kibasi from Lightners and yeah. Struthers, uh, pierogies from the pierogi lady. <laughs> and then this is our caddy mac and cheese over here. Uh, so just some new items here, some new drink menu items for the fall to keep you warm uh, during the cold days. And we've got these huge screens. You've really expanded your coverage. Yes, yes. We added about five 70-inch TVs. We got the NFL Sunday ticket. So we'll have every game, Buckeyes, Browns, everything. I'll tell you, this is your fall headquarters. Come on down to the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery. Buddy knows. For new floors, shop the Floor Store of Ohio. Choose from flooring that's Buddy safe, Buddy approved, and made in Ohio. Plus, take up to 24 months to pay, interest free, better brands, even better prices. You've got a Buddy at the Floor Store of Ohio. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Bernard. I've been giving the people of our valley free advice for over 30 years, and my message has never changed. If you're involved in a car, truck, or motorcycle accident, don't try to handle it yourself. Call a lawyer. A lawyer will be your representative, dealing with doctors, medical insurance, and all the red tape that you may face. Hiring a lawyer doesn't mean you'll end up in court, and remember, there are no upfront fees on personal injury cases. That's good advice. Need a lawyer? Learn more at ElizabethBernardLaw.com. Mayflower Wilm is your full-service, independent insurance agency. We work with several insurance companies to offer you choices for your insurance needs. We'll find the right product at the right price. 
Personal, business, farm, life, trust Mayflower Woolham. You focus on what's important, we'll take care of the details. Mayflower Woolham, close by with three locations to serve you. Woolley Brothers has a great choice of quality cheeses. We use our relationship with Old World Houses to specially select the product and then have it custom cut and packaged by our own local artisans. At Woolley Brothers Market, our family is in the store. RS Paint is a locally owned paint store and not a paint department. Inspiration comes easy when choosing exciting Benjamin Moore colors and finish. Over 3,400 vibrant and durable colors are yours at RS Paint. In 2019, Camp Stambaugh in Canfield will be celebrating its 100th anniversary. The camp originally was the farm of Henry Stambaugh, and upon his death in 1919, bequeathed the property for the use and benefit of the local association of the Boy Scouts of America. Scouting has a rich history here in the Mahoning Valley. The museum at Camp Stambaugh has a wealth of information and artifacts for Boy Scout enthusiasts. And the man who started it all was Baden Powell over in England. Yes. And Bill Moss is the museum curator here at Camp Stambaugh. And you portray him. You go all around the country portraying the founder of yes. the Boy Scouts. Yes, we do that. It's quite entertaining. <laughs> it is. And I mean, you have the English accent. Of course. And tell me, Baden-Powell, why did you begin the Scout movement? What, and what year was that? Well, it was in 1907. I had the first experimental camp. But uh, in my war days, I had written several books. One was called AIDS to Scouting. And when I returned to England in 1901 from one of my campaigns, I found that they were using that book in schools as a textbook. So I envisioned as a challenge to this. Well, if a book written for military scouts was in, in troil the youth to perform the same way, how much more interesting would it be for the book, boys to have the book of their own? So that's what I did. And Bill, now that uh, we are, you are back. I'm back. Welcome back. Our seance is over. Well, thank you. Um, this room has a lot of the uniform. This is one of the original scout this uniforms. This is one of the original Boy Scout uniforms from back in the teens when the program first started. And uh, do people donate and you just acquire these yes, things? Yes. Most of the stuff here is donated. And as new things come in or things change, you know, I change the decorations and, and the uniforms and the things we display. But really the highlight of a scout's life would be the National Jamboree. Yes, yes. Or the International Jamboree. Well, either one. Okay. The National Jamboree we have every four years. And right now it's always being held down in West Virginia at the Summit Bechtel Reserve. And in here is a lot of patches and things from the very last jamboree in 2017 that the scouts do. Trading patches and acquiring these things is a big thing at the National Jamboree. And then they meet people from all across the nation, yeah. the, the world. A child is Boy Scout in the Boy Scouting program from age 11 to 18. So since the Jamboree is only every four years, there's only once during his scouting career as a scout that he would have the opportunity to go to a National Jamboree. And this year marks girls being able to join Boy Scouts, correct? Yes. We've had girls in scouting uh, in the Explorer program back from the, the 70s, and then the Venturing program is co-ed also, and that's a high adventure program. But this year, starting this year, we allow the girls into the Cub Scouting and the Boy Scouting program. Well, we know we're getting ready for the 100th anniversary of Camp Stambaugh, but it's also the 25th anniversary of a book Boy Scouts, and this is all about the history of scouting in the Mahoning Valley, and Tony Valley Jr. is the author of this. And you know, I went through your book, and it really is interesting, all the people that made the scouts such a success in Mahoning County. Yes. And why did you decide to publish this? Well, the reason is, is I was growing up as a scout, and as an older, you know, older scout, I guess you could say. Yes. I worked with a lot of scouters and people that had helped in the council and the camp 
And as they were moving on to the great scoutmaster in the sky, as I put in the book, I'm thinking, who's going to remember these people? Yeah. So I started to make some notes. And in the process of doing that, I got hooked on the history. <laughs> yeah. And I started doing research and talking to people about photos, and it became kind of a passion. So it ended up being a book. So some of the people that I worked with are in there, and I'm sure I missed many people. And the pictures. People. I mean, a lot of people must have really helped you they did. dig through and find some of the, this information. Yes, very helpful because I wasn't around when those pictures were taken, obviously. But, yes. but uh, they were very helpful in digging in their attic. Even when they didn't want to, we'd say, I'd say, let's get a ladder and look right now. And then yeah. some of them would do that. You know, to a parent looking, what, what would you say to encourage them to really join this organization? I, I think that parents ought to allow their children um, to try the scouting program and see what they think about it. But I think the key is for the parents to get involved. Because just sending your, your child out to a program, um, uh, it's hit or miss. Getting involved, being on a committee, or at least know what's going on. You'll, you'll really buy into the program, I believe. So I think that's, that's a big plus. My parents were involved and that was a big value for me. And the values I think, you, you know, that you learn in Scouts, you know, really will help you for the rest of your life. Oh, they, they do. You pull on them all the time. And you know, sometimes I was talking to uh, one of the people that were here, I think his name was Rick Shell, who, who's into the history. And we were talking about stuff that we saved as a Scout. He found him, looked at him. I said, did it take you back to that time? And he says, absolutely. So it, it's almost, there's good memories involved and it, it keeps you grounded to what you could do. I mean, there are many times, it's just like this book, there's sometimes I'm working on other, other projects and you feel like, I just don't have the time or I don't have the ambition. You look at this and you're like, well, you did that and you didn't know what you were doing. Keep working on this project. There'll be an end to it. Celebrate Camp Standby's 100th anniversary on September 21st. It is open to the public. For more information, go to gtcbsa.org. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. To own a business where your name's on the window can be pretty cool. That's my family. My name is Danny Catullo, and I'm the owner of Catullo Prime Meats. My grandfather started the business in 1962. I was able to take our old style butcher shop and bring it out to the new age using e-commerce to get our products to more customers. When we started shipping, there was not a ton of information out there. That's where we really worked with FedEx so they could be able to help us with our perishable shipping. We were taking on new purchases that we never had to make before. Boxes, coolers, ice packs, anything that was involved around shipping. So we can no longer do this with the cash that we had on hand. So because of the plum card from American Express and all of its benefits, it was a natural fit to help grow our business. And when someone calls and lets you know that you made their dinner, that's satisfaction that you can't get anywhere else. I am blessed with a wonderful husband. He stuck with me through thick and thin, and he's a fantastic father. So when he needed long-term care, not just any place would do, we did our research. Everyone said, trust the name you know, Briarfield. With all those locations, there's always one close. That made it easy for me and the kids to visit more often, Briarfield. Trust the name you know, Briarfield. Proudly serving the Valley for over 20 years. Ruli Brothers is way ahead of the competition. Check out Ruli Spice World, where you can buy bulk herbs and spices, plus candies, nuts, and fillings for pennies on the dollar. At Ruli Brothers Market, our family's in the store. Selling engagement rings never gets old. It's love. It's a huge untaking because they're gonna wear that ring probably forever, but if they're not gonna wear it forever, they're gonna pass it down to somebody. Our rings will hold a lifetime and we wanna make sure it does. We stand by every single thing that we sell. I believe I can find the perfect ring. I really try to get them exactly what she would want. And to just be a little part of that is really, it warms your heart inside. Get real, get Kamara. Buddy knows. For new floors, shop the Floor Store of Ohio. Choose from flooring that's Buddy safe, Buddy approved, and made in Ohio. Plus, take up to 24 months to pay. Interest free. Better brands, even better prices. You've got a Buddy at the Floor Store of Ohio.
Well, I am back in Chrissy and McCabe Patrick's kitchen, and I'm never leaving. I just love this space. There's just so much room, and all the appliances are new, and there's, I just love it. Look at this huge counter, and I'm going to make another great dish. This is super easy. It comes together in about a half an hour. The longest time uh, you'll spend is marinating the chicken, but I love Asian flavors. And the largest expense is probably gonna be buying some of the Asian ingredients if you don't already have them. But once you have them, you'll have them in your cupboard forever. And this is an Asian wilted salad with chicken. For this recipe, for the marinade, you'll need two tablespoons of oyster sauce, one tablespoon of soy sauce, one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of cornstarch, one tablespoon of sriracha chili sauce, two teaspoons of fish sauce, one half teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper, four cloves of garlic minced, and one pound of chicken breast cut into one inch pieces. The marinade is very important. This adds so much flavor to the dish and really seek out the oyster sauce. It's not very expensive, two or three bucks a bottle, but it really adds a rich flavor. So make sure you add about two tablespoons of that. Then you want the soy sauce, and then you want the sriracha chili sauce, and then the fish sauce. This is more of a liquid, and this really is, smells kind of icky, but it really adds a nice flavor to it. And then a little bit of sweetener with the sugar and the cornstarch, because that really helps thicken it up and keep it all together. And then the garlic. All right. And before we mix that up, I should give it a couple grinds of black pepper. So just mix that up really well. And these are really nice flavors. And just add the chicken. And make sure that you cover it evenly with all of this marinade. And you only need about 15 or 20 minutes. And then what I do is just take a large platter and I really excuse me, like the arugula. And I added some butter leaves to that. And you know, just fill the platter with all these different greens. And then I chopped up about a half a carton of the grape tomatoes. And I really like the way the uh, red onion tastes with this. It gives it a nice bite. And then I really like herbs. So I think mint works best. So I would just tear up some fresh mint. I've already prepared the white rice, but if you haven't, this is a good time. Just one cup of white rice. I like basmati, but you can use a uh, short grain, long grain rice, whatever you feel you like best. So I heated some canola oil in my wok pan, but you could just use a large skillet if you don't have one. And you want it to be nice and hot. This step doesn't take long at all. And all we're gonna do is add our chicken. Whoa, and all the marinade. And you just wanna evenly distribute it and make sure it cooks evenly. It'll be about two or three minutes on each side. The chicken is cooked. All I'm gonna do is put together a little oil, a little unseasoned rice vinegar. The seasoned is too sweet. They add sugar to it, I don't really care for that. A little fresh ground black pepper, and just a little bit of salt, and you just mix it up. And then I just pour this over the salad portion to get the greens moistened. And then we have our cooked rice and we put this on top and it helps wilt our lettuce that is dressed. So I will just pour this evenly. Look at this, the sauce and everything and it's so flavorful 
Isn't that a nice? Easy presentation. And you just scoop from the bottom. And you take that, it serves four to six people. So Chrissy, what do you think? Excellent. I mean, so much for the new house smell, but <laughs> this is delicious. <laughs> Very good. Perfect. Perfect. And it's time. light, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, this it's really meal. easy. I love it all. I like the rice on the arugula on everything. I know, because all This is a grissy one. meal. I know. I said you were going to like this. I would eat this all week. I'm going to leave this. You're going to have it all week. Yes. Oh, and do you like the beautiful. wine? Yep. This I don't know. Is, I haven't tried um, it yet. Oh my gosh. What is this, it? It's a Pinot Gris. I really like it. It's from California. Uh, La Crema. Cheers. I think it's delish. Cuts through the Asian notes, you know? Wow. So, How do you know all this? You know what, Chrissy? I don't know. You know, I got to tell you. It's, it's, it's a lot of work. I know. <laughs> she makes it look easy, but when you hear the clanging well, and you banging. Don't look behind the scenes. There's don't a look lot behind of the dirty scenes. dishes. Go to my website, caseymaloneshow.com. Right there, you're going to find my Asian Excellent. wilted salad with chicken. And I really do appreciate your hospitality. Thank I, you, McCabe. You're welcome, Thank you, Casey. Christine. He'll come on next week. <laughs> Cheers. The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.